to Healthy in a Wild World, where we talk about healthy practices that are realistic, that align with your life, and help you live a long-term, healthy, well, happy lifestyle. Today, we're talking with Alyssa Savez, and she's got quite the story for you guys. And when she and I first talked, um, I learned quite a few things, which is not not too rare because I actually go looking for these things, but I love talking with other providers and practitioners in this field who can right off the bat teach me something. So I'm going to turn this over to her. Um, We're going to start this podcast with a little snippet. So by now you figured out what this episode is all about. So I'm going to turn this over to her. I'm going to let Alyssa introduce herself and um, we're going to get to chit-chatting. So Alyssa, thank you for being here. Welcome. I am so happy to have this chat with you and to get the chance to talk again. Yeah. Thank you, Bonnie, for having me on here today. I'm super excited to be here and share with your audience. There's so much to talk about. So yeah, my name is Alyssa. I am a nutritional therapy practitioner as well as a restorative wellness practitioner. And I specialize in working with women with endometriosis because that's been a big part of my personal journey and something that I am very passionate about. So my journey, I mean, my journey with endometriosis really started back even in my late teen years, but um, that was, I really had no idea what was happening in my body, of course, at the time, like so many other people. So really it started more in my late twenties when I first, you know, went off birth control for the first time in years and started having a natural cycle again and started having a whole lot of symptoms and things happening in my body, had no idea what was going on. And of course, kind of went the typical route at first where I went to see a doctor or two or three and wasn't really getting any answers, wasn't really getting anywhere. It took quite some time to actually finally receive a diagnosis of what was happening in the first place. And even when I got that diagnosis, there was a whole lot of just, here's a medication. Oh, that didn't work. Here's another medication. We're just going to block all the hormones. And I'm over here saying, wait a minute, I just came off birth control after having been on it for years and was feeling other than the endometriosis symptoms that were coming up and and many other ways I was feeling a lot better being off of it and wasn't loving that that was my only option wasn't loving the fact that the doctors were telling me you know sorry this there's no cure for endometriosis you have it for the rest of your life just take this medication good luck and you know I'm one of those people who just I'm not going to sit down and just do whatever the doctors <laughs> tell me. So I decided to kind of go my own route a little bit there or a lot of it. And st- initially started with me just experimenting with the diet that I was eating, right? I started kind of cleaning up my diet, eating more vegetables. You know, uh, I I did end up going gluten-free, which for I'm not saying that everybody needs to do that, but for me, it made a big difference in my life. And just kind of paying more attention to what foods were working well in my body, what foods weren't, what what was working, what wasn't working. And just with those dietary changes that I was making, I started to notice a huge difference in my pain levels and some of the other symptoms. And that kind of got me thinking, there's got to be more to this. You know, even the doctor's telling me, oh, food has nothing to do with it. It won't help you. I, I just, I was like, no, no, disagree food is medicine, going to figure this one out. And so that got me to, you know, realizing what an impact it was having on my life, just the small changes I was making on my own. And I just wanted to learn more about it because A, I wanted to learn more to be able to help myself, of course, and continue to improve my symptoms and feel better along the way. But secondly, of course, I wanted to be able to pass that knowledge forward and help other people because there's so many people out there who are struggling And so that's what I did. I went in to actually receive some training and certifications in learning about how to use food as medicine and how to really get to the underlying cause of what was going on in my body in the first place. Like, why am I experiencing this pain and this fatigue and these weird wacky cycles and all the different things that were going on in my body? And so that led me through a whole rabbit hole of digging into all things gut health and hormones and nutrition and supplements and so many different things. And it's it's taken me to a journey now where I'm able to 
pass that forward, pay it forward in a way and help other people who are having similar journeys and similar struggles. Uh, because over the years that I've been working on this, I have seen just an enormous transformation in my health. I mean, I went from being in really, really intense pain every single month and just, it was, it was affecting my life in, on a day-to-day -day basis. It was affecting relationships. It was affecting my ability to work. It was affecting just my, <laughs> my ability to thrive through life, especially at such a young age. And so I have really dedicated my life now to paying that forward and helping other people who may be struggling with similar things. I love that. And I remember one of the things that you and I connected really well on was the gut health. Mm -hmm. I came from a different avenue, but I, you know, even as a trainer, I kept telling everyone it, it starts at the core. It starts at your belly button, your center being mm -hmm. and goes out. Absolutely. Certainly it's no different. And, you know, you'd mentioned gluten-free. Everybody has something that they're sensitive to nowadays. They're, the way that our food system is, and once you can partner back up with your body and figure out what that is, mm -hmm. it makes all the difference. So powerful. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it, it's tremendously powerful. Getting getting to the point where your conscious brain understands that and stops throwing mm -hmm. that like temper tantrum might be that that's sometimes a struggle but for the most part it's and yeah going through life you know once once you start healing your your gut and you start healing your body the longer and the more consistent you are the healthier and healthier you feel mm -hmm. absolutely yeah it's certainly not going to be an overnight transformation for anybody I have no quick fix that's going to get you feeling better by next week, but it's making those little changes over time, being consistent with it, uh, that's going to end up having those long-term impacts on the way that you feel in general. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that um, I actually didn't know a lot about, and you know, it makes sense now after we were talking about it. Um, but it's not necessarily something I, I really thought about was that connection between your gut health and endometriosis. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge topic, of course. There's <laughs> there's a lot to say about uh, the connection between gut health and endometriosis, but lucky for you, it's something that I <laughs> love to talk about and could talk about all day long. So a few things that come to mind for, I mean, for starters, it's exactly what you were saying, right? Your gut health really relates back to most things that are going on in your body, right? Because your, your digestive system is how your body actually absorbs nutrients from the foods that you eat. And we need nutrients in order to do everything. So just on a very basic level, and this is going to apply to everybody, whether you have endometriosis or not. It's all about that. Like, even if you're eating the world's best diet, whatever that may mean, <laughs> if you're not, if your digestive system is not functioning optimally, then you may not actually be able to absorb nutrients from that food. So it might be coming in and out without really having a lot of impact on your body. So just that in and of itself can have huge impacts because if you are not digesting optimally and your body is not getting the nutrients that it needs from the food that you're eating, it's going to end up having downstream effects. And, you know, in the case of endometriosis, not saying that lacking certain nutrients caused endometriosis by any means, but it does make it much harder for your body to, to heal, to keep up with all of its day-to-day -day processes. And that's, that cascade of events is oftentimes where major issues come from, right? It's not an, a, an overnight process, just like healing is not an overnight process. Getting to where you are right now didn't happen overnight either. It can be something that that develops over time. And, you know, like with endometriosis, there's definitely a lot of confusion, I would say, at, at the present moment as to exactly how it develops, where it comes from. You know, there is a have been a lot of studies, there's a lot of information out there, but there doesn't seem to be a super definitive answer on that. They do think that there is some sort of a genetic component, however, but there is something to epigenetics, which is that 
your your genes only do so much. And then it's a matter of your diet and lifestyle choices along the way that can impact how your genes actually present themselves over the course of your life. So that's definitely something to consider, especially when it comes to, to nutrient absorption and all of that. Um, but as far as gut health even having a more direct impact on endometriosis, I think one of the really important things to understand is kind of a two-part thing. One is that endometriosis does have an immune system component to it, like an immune dysfunction component to it. So there, you know, scientists research that have uh, that has been done over the years, they they think that actually the endometriosis lesions that begin to develop, it's actually a very common occurrence that these cells, these abnormal sort of cells end up, you know, being where they shouldn't be basically in your body, but that in a normal healthy body, the immune system just comes right behind and cleans it all up. Whereas with endometriosis, that doesn't happen. And so those lesions kind of take hold and start and can begin to grow and develop and progress along the way. So and oftentimes what happens with that is just that your immune system, it's kind of like an army with troops, right? It only has so many troops to send out at one time. And if they're all busy doing one thing, that means there's not enough resources left over to do something else. And so that's where the gut health piece really comes in because about 70 to 80% of your immune system lives inside of your gut. And so if there's a lot of stuff going on in your gut and your immune system is being chronically activated and being put to work in that area, then no, there aren't going to be a lot of resources left over to help to do things like sweep away tissue that shouldn't be in certain places in your body, which happens a lot with when endometriosis is developing. So then we have to take a look at, okay, but why is your your that immune system in your gut firing all the time? Like what is going on in there? What What is causing that to happen? And that can come from a lot of different things, right? That can come from food sensitivities that are happening in your body. If you're chronically eating foods that your body, that your, your immune system is reacting to, then you're just, you're constantly putting it on, on alarm. Um, and that can come both from just, you know, some of, we certainly, many of us have some sort of food intolerance or another, like I mentioned, gluten, dairy is another thing. That's an issue for me. That's another one that's very common. And I was eating both of those things previously. So probably my immune system was freaking out because I was eating it all the time. Mm -hmm. And it can also even develop just because the, the integrity of your gut lining has been compromised a little bit. This is what we call leaky gut syndrome, right? Where there's, and this comes back to the digestive health thing, right? So if, if your food's not being broken down properly, you end up having these large food particles making their way through your intestines and can damage the lining of your intestines. And then when that happens, now those large food particles passing through can end up going through that gut lining and meet up with your bloodstream where your immune system lives and your immune system recognizes that as foreign and it will start to flag it. And now every time you eat that food, your immune system is firing and that can happen multiple times with, with many different foods. And next thing you know, your body is sensitive to everything and you feel like you can't eat any foods <laughs> and that's causing that immune system to fire up. It can also come from things like just imbalances in your microbiome in general. So maybe there's an overgrowth of bacteria or even yeast or parasites or all kinds of different things can be going on in your gut. And when those things are out of balance, let's say, let's just use the bacteria as an example. There's a whole bunch of the, what we call the bad gut bugs, the, <laughs> the bacteria that are not beneficial for your body because we all have bacteria in our gut. In fact, we want it to be there because the, the beneficial flora in our gut actually does have a lot of benefits. It helps to break down foods that we can't digest on our own. It, it creates a lot of byproducts that we, that are very healthy for us and beneficial for us and, and help our health along the way. So there's a lot of, of benefits that come from that bacteria, but then there are other types of bacteria that are very opportunistic and can actually cause damage to your body, can, can be harmful to you. And those can also activate that immune system when your immune system is chronically trying to fight, you know, millions, billions of <laughs> these <laughs> bacteria living in your gut that shouldn't be there. 
it gets overwhelmed. And now your immune system is not able to address things that it should be addressing in your body, like the development of those endometriosis lesions. So it's one of those things, it's it's really a big cascade that happens. It's it's we're looking at what's happening <laughs> from the at the very beginning, right? And and how each little thing in your body affects the next. And so when we're looking at trying to get to a, a place of supporting your body, getting to a place of healing, we're wanting to kind of backtrack and look at, okay, what's stressing out your immune system? What's happening in there? Why, why are all these things going on? Um, you know, what imbalances might be happening in your gut? Because it's very common to have things like that dysbiosis happening in your gut. And when we can get to the bottom of that and help bring things back into balance, that can have huge impacts on how you feel and your overall health, right? And it's very common too for people with endometriosis to have digestive symptoms directly, right? You might be experiencing bloating, constipation, diarrhea, right? There's even a whole symptom called endo belly, which is refers to that crazy bloating that people experience. And to me, when I see things like that, when I see all of these digestive symptoms popping up, that's the first thing that comes to my mind is your digestive system itself functioning optimally. And also how is the balance in your microbiome going on? Because that alone can make an enormous difference in the way that you feel your overall health, right? Not saying that will, you know, quote unquote, cure your endometriosis if you, if you heal your gut. Uh, it's not a, quite as simple as that, but it's definitely a wonderful place to start. And it it can bring a lot of relief to a lot of those symptoms that we experience, the pain and fatigue. Because um, when it comes to that too, like we hear a lot about inflammation, for example, and this is going to relate, get back to your gut health as well. What inflammation is, is it's your immune system at work. Think about if you get, it's a little easier to picture, I think, with an external type injury. So let's say you get some sort of a cut on your finger. You pick up a piece of paper, you get a paper cut on your finger. The first thing that you feel is pain, right? That's the may, maybe relatively minor in that instance of a paper cut. All of those can quite hurt sometimes too. <laughs> minor in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But that's that pain is uh, is a sign of, of that inflammation at work, right? You might see some redness and puffiness and all of that stuff around that site because your immune system is flooding in and and helping to to fight that off. Or similarly, if you if you catch a cold, right? Oftentimes the first symptom that you experience if you catch a bug of some sort is you're just feeling tired and you get that fatigue happening because your immune system is firing up. Uh, to help to to battle that off. And what happens with endometriosis is just that that's happening all day, every day. And that's where a lot of that chronic fatigue, chronic pain, just chronic inflammation comes up. It's just that there's there's just a lot happening inside of your body that we may not even be aware of. Yeah. And trying to, trying to navigate that um, when your gut's already compromised. Mm-hmm is it's such a challenge and in some cases you know like what you were talking about it's a lot of people don't realize that the reason so many of us focus on gut health first is because when your immune system is supported and it gets what it needs it can do its job more effectively and by more effectively what that ultimately means is less inflammation and less pain mhm mm not that it's not there, but your body isn't boosting the response. Yeah. That it's feeling reality, which may not be or feel as horrible as it does. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the things, and I, I don't know if you've run into this, but one of the things that um, people find very shocking when I talk to them is that many food sensitivities are just your body being overwhelmed. Yep. And once your gut is in balance, your sensitivities significantly decrease. Mm -hmm. That may stick around. My my dairy intolerance went nowhere. Yeah, and, you know, soy soy is not going anywhere anytime soon either. Yeah, but everything else has stabilized. And you know, eating peas used to be a major issue for me. Mm. 
peas, peanuts, that, that whole family of, of peas. Um, <laughs> it used to be a major challenge for me. And really all it was is my body was in that state of trauma and stress. I mean, we were throwing hormones in my body left and right. Mm-hmm. A little fertility treatment. Mm-hmm. And what that does is the very first place that attacks is your stomach. Yeah. And this is your immune system. So anytime you're dealing with anything, even a common cold, your your gut's the first place that's attacked. It's it's like the first line of defense. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> you breach that fort and you, you got a lot of repair to do. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I know we talked a little bit about, you know, nutrition and the way that that can impact your gut. Can you give us, do you have like a top two or three suggestions for holistic natural ways that someone could manage their endometriosis better, or at least yeah. manage the endo belly? Cause I know that yeah. that's a significant issue for so many people. Yeah. Absolutely. It very much is. Yeah. I, I would say my, my top piece of advice for anybody who's, you know, struggling with endometriosis, especially if you're kind of just getting started in the world of understanding how diet impacts your health and the way that you feel. My best piece of advice is just to eat whole foods as much as possible, meaning foods that are as they appear in nature, right? Your fruits, your vegetables, your whole food sources of protein like meat and poultry and eggs. Of course, this is all dependent on what works well for your body. Some of those foods, you know, if you you have certain sensitivities and intolerances and stuff, you know, of course, follow along with those. Like dairy is a perfect example. Dairy can be very beneficial for a lot of people. It has a lot of benefits, a lot of nutrients in it, but it also doesn't work well for a lot of people. I know I am on that list. My gut definitely doesn't feel well if I have dairy. So that's a no-go for me, but it doesn't mean it is for everybody. Um, Just focusing on, on those whole foods can make huge impacts right there because if you compare any whole food to any processed packaged food, it's automatically going to have more nutrients. It's going to have much uh, better impacts on your body and your overall health. It's going to help you get those nutrients into your body so that your body has the resources that it needs to begin that healing process. So that is a definite step one for anybody, (laughs) right? Is just focus on the whole foods. Keep it simple because I hear so much thrown around these days about the endo diet, the endometriosis diet, and all these specific foods that you should eat and shouldn't eat. And honestly, what I really get out of that is just there's a lot of confusion in that area. And I think a lot of what it comes down to is people are sharing what worked well for them. Like, oh, I cut out red meat, for example, and I felt a lot better. Well, that may be true for that person, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be the case for everybody which I guess really comes to my part two. (laughs) My second best piece of advice is to learn what works for your own unique body. We're just, even if, you know, you're with a whole group of people who all have endometriosis. So supposedly we're all semi the same. We're not, we're all different bodies. We come from different backgrounds there's just so much in our body that is very unique and individual. Just having endometriosis in the grand scheme of things means very little in the overall, you know, way that your body works and what your body needs. So I guess my, really my biggest advice here is just to stop listening to other people's advice about what you should eat (laughs) and instead focus on work, what works for your body. Like, for example, I work with clients one-on-one who have endometriosis and every single one of them is eating differently. It's not, I don't have like, oh, you have endometriosis. Here's the list of foods you should and shouldn't eat because everybody's body reacts differently. You know, there certainly is something to, many people have developed specific food sensitivities and just, we all come from different cultures, different backgrounds. 
Um, we've all lived different lives. We all have different biology. Like there's so many factors at play. So it's much more a matter of figuring out what actually works for your unique body. And, you know, even when it comes to the food sensitivities, I really liked what you were saying before about, you know, like the, cutting out the peas and the peanuts and that wasn't working well for you. But I love that now you've gotten to a place where you've you found that, you know, healing in your body to now where you are able to eat the foods. And that's the end goal, right? The goal is not just to find that next food that you have to cut out. So now I only have five foods left that are safe for me to eat. And I'm terrified to go out in social situations and have to deal with that because I have no foods that I can eat. That's not a way to live, right? Uh, I mean, even for me, like I'm, I'm sensitive to gluten and dairy, and that is restrictive in and of itself. There is some reality to having to navigate that. But other than that, I eat pretty much everything. I mean, I that wasn't always the case. I certainly once upon a time, similarly to you, had food sensitivities that were happening. I, I kind of was able to pinpoint what was going on in my body, doing some testing and things like that to actually see what's happening, what's going on in my body. And I did remove foods that I was sensitive to for a period of time, while I was also doing that deeper gut healing work to really get to the root of why my body was sensitive to all these different foods in the first place. But now I'm in a place where I, I'm eating all the foods. I, I Other than, for me, gluten and dairy, and of course, just the, the foods that are generally not healthy for human beings anyway. Like I, I really try to avoid vegetable oil and, uh, and soy. It was just always a little bit of a, I don't completely avoid it by any means. I don't actually have a sensitivity to soy, but I just try not to overdo it. And honestly, a lot of it with soy is like, it comes in the form of soybean oil, which isn't particularly healthy for us. If it's like I'm eating edamame, that's a different story. That's a whole food source. Anyway, there's, there's there's a lot to unpack with that. But other than that, give me any fruit, give me any vegetable, give me any source of, of protein, any sort of meat, poultry, eggs, any of that. I'm able to eat all of it, right? I'm not cutting out any major, you know, foods. I, I don't I don't have like a long list of foods that I avoid on a day-to-day -day basis. All of that for me was a short-term process, and that's the same process that I help other people with as well. It's 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 not intended to be a long-term plan of restricting your diet like crazy because it's just not sustainable. It's going to leave you with nutrient deficiencies. It's going to leave you feeling like you're going crazy because <laughs> you don't know what to eat anymore, and that's just not going to be healthy physically or mentally or any of the things. So that's really my best advice. I know that's not like super specific, but I just, you know, exactly what I said, you kind of can be. <laughs> and, and you and I follow similar processes where I'll remove things for a while, but the very first step that I do with each of the clients that I work with, even if it's, we're just talking, the very first homework assignment you have is I want to know what you're eating, when you're eating it. And what happens mm -hmm. Don't about time? I just, I need to know what's happening. Yeah. Because if you're responding to food, it's got to go for a minute so that we can, we can give your stomach and your body a little bit of a hug. It needs a break because it's trying so hard and it's working over time. Mm -hmm. It's like you, your, your gut's a factory. And if the factory is a worker, now you, your little gut workers, are working 24 seven, they need a break, they need a vacation. And the vacation is taking some of those foods out for a while, mm -hmm. giving your, your gut, giving your body a baseline that's very easy to digest, that's not gonna throw you into turmoil and just letting your body hit a reset button. Yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my so important. <laughs> yeah, my first program has always been the very first step that I send everybody has always been a reset. And mm -hmm. I know it's kind of one of those terms that so many of us use, but sure. there's truth to it. Yeah. You know, if you're just continuing to feed people or feed your stomach foods that you're feeling sick, what you're eating is causing you to feel sick. You're not getting better. You have, you have to take a step back. And you have to relax. And I love what you said about, you know, what 
someone next to you is eating isn't necessarily what you should be eating. Yeah. You're so very different. Mm -hmm. And there are how many thousands of bestseller diet and nutrition books out there and health? And the whole reason is there are groups of people that these things work for. Mm -hmm. there, there's truth to each and every one. And yes, there are scientific studies behind each and every one. But that doesn't mean it works for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. You got to figure out what blend and mix works for you. Yes. Because otherwise, you just, you hit that yo-yo your or the hamster wheel, whatever analogy you want to go with. <laughs> yeah. You're just returning back. To where you started and yeah yeah, yeah. and I think the, the biggest takeaway that I've gotten through just experiencing that for myself watching other people experience the same thing biggest takeaway that I've gotten is just like stop looking outside of yourself for the answers you know especially when it comes to to diet what you're eating our bodies are very intuitive right and sometimes it's a matter of kind of going back to your roots and learning to interpret and understand the signals that your body is sending. But when you learn to really tune in and listen to that, our bodies know, right? Like at this point in time, and of course this, I've been working on this stuff for years now. So I have learned to kind of develop that intuition more over time, but I can tell at this point very quickly, if I've eaten something that my body is not responding well to, and, and the opposite, I can I can also tell if the foods that I'm eating on a regular basis are doing well for my body. It's 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 just a matter of really tuning in and listen because I think so often, especially in our just our modern culture, our, our modern society, unfortunately, we are kind of taught to ignore that, right? We're kind of taught to, you know, just get on with our lives and keep going no matter what's happening, and and. I think part of that is just a lot of symptoms are really normalized, like bloating, for example, we're all kind of taught that bloating is just a normal part of life, you're just going to be bloated. And I think especially for for women, maybe even more so, it's just, you're just get bloated sometimes. Okay, but we don't really take the time to investigate why what's going on, what's kind of at the root of that. Uh, and, you know, it can be related directly to food. It can also be related to, you know, your digestive health in general, but just even taking the time to notice things like that and begin to kind of make those connections. Or if you're having changes in your bowels, right, all of a sudden your bowels are looser than they used to be, or maybe you're experiencing constipation and that didn't used to happen, or maybe things are kind of coming and going on that front. Well, that's your body telling you something. Any sort of symptom that you're that you're experiencing, that you're feeling in your body, that's your body sending out a signal for help. Like, hey, <laughs> something's going on in here. I'm feeling uncomfortable. This, you know, I'm I'm sending you this warning signal of something's going on in here. And if we can learn to actually listen to that and tune into that instead of just ignoring that and you know, getting back to work or whatever, whatever your tasks are for the day, just that alone can be really powerful. It really can. And, you know, there's so much truth to learning how your body sends signals. Cravings mm -hmm. are there for a reason. It's your subconscious telling you what you need, mm -hmm. you know, and we've lost track of the fact that all these things that feel normal in our society that we've been told are just they just happen. They don't. Mm -hmm. These are things that we've come to expect as normal because they happen so prevalently. But they're not, they're not normal. And once you learn how your body actually sends signals to you, it can make all the difference in the world. Yeah, exactly. I 100% agree on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, is there anything that you have coming up? Now, I know this episode, we're not recording during March, but March is Endometriosis Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything for this month or, you know, just in general that you could send people away with some little nuggets or things that might be happening? Yeah, I don't I don't have any particular events coming up in in uh in March or, or but I do have um 
I do actually have a podcast myself called the Endo Belly Girl Podcast. And during the month of March, we will definitely be talking about some things related to just, I mean, I've talked about endometriosis every week, of course, because that's the, the topic of the podcast, but we will certainly be having some conversations and things around just awareness of endometriosis and, you know, thing, things that I think we should all, you know, have more awareness of, whether it's just how to tune in more with our own bodies or, you know, how to bring more understanding to our loved ones around us. There's a lot of little topics that we can talk about. So definitely tune in uh, to that. And we'll be, we'll be talking about that. You can also find me on Instagram at endobelly girl. And I have a lot of content on there. I'm always sharing things and, and posting things. So please feel free to connect. You can even send me a little DM and say, hi, I always like to actually talk to human beings, right? <laughs> So, yeah. it, it is, is always so nice, nice that's in this my digital favorite. world just yeah the just to say hi or get a hi <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly yeah and then you can always find uh find me on my website as well which is www.endobellygirl.com there's lots of resources on there as well um that you can take a look at and you know kind of learn some more things about endometriosis that hopefully can be very helpful for you in your healing journey. I hope so. Yeah. We'll, we'll link everything in the show notes so everybody can find you easy. They can just pop over. Um, and then we'll definitely tag you in this so that people can find you that way too. Perfect. Um, One last thing. Did you have any last minute tips, suggestions, any nuggets that we might not have talked about that you wanted to make sure to mention? I mean, I think we covered a whole lot today, so we did. I don't, I don't want to like completely overwhelm anybody, but yeah, yeah, honestly, I think if there's one takeaway that you have from today, let it be about just that, like listening to your own intuition, um, understanding that we are all different. We are all individuals and your journey is just going to be unique to you. And that's okay. Right. I think just that alone takes a lot of that mental pressure off of, you know, the things that we're quote unquote supposed to be doing. I hear stuff like that all the time. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be eating this. Um, You know, try to get away from following anybody else's rules, uh, except for the ones that actually resonate with you and work for your own body. I think that's probably the most powerful takeaway and important takeaway that we can all have from today. (laughs) I agree. I agree. Be a rebel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even if even if that's not you in real life, be a rebel. Yes, for yourself. Absolutely. For yourself. Well, thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful to you. Um, and we'll definitely link everything below so everybody can find you very easily because I know significant portion of the people watching this podcast have have or are dealing with either endometriosis or PCOS. It's so very common, right? (laughs) Very common, very common. Unfortunately, but you know, there's, there's things we can do to, to help feel better. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. And if you like this episode, you want to see more, you have tips, feedback, comments, leave them below. Even the ugly stuff, people, we don't grow unless we know. So I will chat with you guys all later and uh, I will see you on Instagram or somewhere else. So you and I will stay in touch for sure. Um, Cause I, there's a lot of crossover here. So absolutely. Well, thank surprised. you so much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Cheers.